Hello friends, welcome. Wherever you're joining us from, we're glad to have you. Thank you so much. Welcome to this time of worship with the Richmond United Church in Mandeville, Jamaica. We are so glad to have you in company with us today. And we trust that this worship experience will impact you in some positive way and draw you closer to Almighty God. Let us hear the call to worship as taken from Psalm 135. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. You who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praise to his name, for that is pleasant. Amen. And that is why we gather that's why we are here, to praise the Lord and to sing songs, to reflect on his word and to offer up our purse. May the Lord continue to speak to us as we continue in worship. God is worthy to be praised, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us now offer our prayer of thanksgiving and seek God's forgiveness for our sins. Let us pray. Great and gracious God, glorious in all your ways, marvelous in all your deeds, you are the creator who brought all things into being by your powerful word. Lord God, you spoke and things came into order. You set the universe in its place and you sustain it by your power. We exalt you. Life finds its source in you and most of all, new life finds its source through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, O God, for the new life we have and the opportunity to worship you. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit as our companion as we go through day by day. Eternal God, we acknowledge that we have not been perfect, for we have sinned and brought shame to your name. We have done what is wrong. We have left undone the good you have commanded us to. Forgive us now, O Lord, we pray, and grant us time to change our ways. And enable us by your Spirit then to offer the worship that is truly pleasing to you as we meet. We seek your blessing upon us now, 
And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading is taken from Matthew 11, verses 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you are pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. And it is a pleasure once again to share God's word with you as we reflect together on the Holy Scriptures. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time, this moment. We pray now that your Holy Word would become alive to us May we not only hear it being read, but may we discern its meaning for us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time to rest. That is the title of our reflection for today. It's the first Sunday in July. We've made it to the second half of the year 2020. What a year it has been. This has really been a tiring year so far. One might even say it has been exhausting. So much has happened in such a short time. And many of us are saying enough already. And others may be asking, when will it end? Truly, this has been a demanding period, a challenging and taxing time. It's not been an easy year by any stretch of the imagination, and that is putting it mildly. That's a gross understatement. But today, I want to offer you some comfort in the words of Jesus. This is what the Gospel reading from Matthew says to us today. Jesus speaking says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble and gentle, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In these words, we have an invitation to rest. We hear an opportunity to experience rejuvenation and we have an offer to exchange our heavy and weighty burden for a lighter, more manageable one. This gracious proclamation comes from the lips of the Savior, comes as an expression of Jesus as the revelation of the Father. Earlier in verses 25 to 27, Jesus says that God has revealed God's self in Jesus. And he declares that, that in himself, God shows a picture of what God is like. The God who made the world and took a break, who took a rest. He wants the creation to also take a break and have some rest. Under the old covenant, the indicative marker and the reminder of God's creative work and God's awesome power was to be observed on the seventh day, the Sabbath, the day of rest, a day to stop working and to look at what God has done, to reflect on God's creation. And that was to be observed every seventh day and then every seventh year and then every 49th year, seven times seven, the year of Jubilee, 
Each one of these was to serve as a reminder of God's awesome creative power at work in the world. Under the new covenant, the new arrangement, Hebrews tells us that Jesus is our Sabbath. Jesus is our rest. Jesus is the one whom we look to as a reminder of God's awesome power, but even more so God's new creation as a revealer of God's heart then. Jesus is the one who is able to demonstrate what God's character is like and what God means for us. And he says, we are to find rest in him. And therefore, today, I want to propose to us that whatever burden you may be carrying, and regardless of what situation you may find yourself in, you can discover rest in Jesus. Whatever burden, friends, you may be carrying today, this week, whatever difficult situation you may find yourself in at this time, you can find rest and relief. You can find deliverance in Jesus Christ. So what does that look like? What are we talking about? What does that mean? Well, from our text, consider this. Firstly, the comprehensive nature of this invitation. All who have labored and are heavy laden is, is, the, is whom the, 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 the invitation is directed. Those are the persons to whom the invitation is directed. The offer of rest is a comprehensive invitation that is open to whoever is in need and covers all kinds of needs. No one is excluded and no condition is exempted. The only criterion is that you must be tired, that you need rest. Now, there are two images that Jesus uses in the this, in this first part of his comment. Firstly, there is the person who is tired from work, those who have labored. They have exerted themselves, they have utilized and expended energy. So you have worked hard and you are, you are tired, you are drained, you are empty. Could be physical work, emotional work, mental work spiritual work. In Jesus' day, a lot of people worked manually. They were not as mechanized or automated as we are in this time. A lot of physical energy was expended in traveling, in farming, in building, in working. People of Palestine were new hard work. They were acquainted with hard work. In today's society, we engage in all different kinds of work that also render us tired. For others, just looking for work has rendered them tired. And to all such persons, Jesus says, come. In addition to manual labor, Nowadays, we engage in mental labor and emotional labor. In this season of COVID-19, working from home, going to school at home, working remotely through these different electronic media, Zoom and Google and Microsoft, communicating through WhatsApp and text messages, and email have all put a strain on the mind, always at work, always thinking, always processing, always focusing on something. And our minds have become tired. Our eyes have become tired. Her bodies have become tired. We are drained. We have labored. We are tired of sitting in front of screens. All who have labored mentally, exercised and ex exerted mental energy, Jesus says, come. 
those who have exercised and exerted physical energy, Jesus says, come. Those who have labored emotionally. Now, families are at home 24-7. You wake up at home. You go to work at home. You go to school at home. Your partner is with you. Your children are with you. And all manner of emotional energy is being, is being utilized to maintain the relationship and to keep everything in order and to ensure that everything gets done. And so we feel drained, empty, tired. Pressure to keep the children on track to ensure that they do what they're supposed to do. We have labored. And Jesus says, come. It's an invitation to all those who are tired having labored. The second image is of those who are carrying a heavy load. Those who are heavy laden. In this picture, it is a heavy and weighty burden that is beyond the capacity of the one who is carrying it. If I was to translate that to our context, it reminds me of a few years ago when I went to visit a member and out of their generosity, they gave me a banana, a bunch of banana, chopped from the tree. The bunch of banana had more than 10 hands and each hand had more than a dozen fingers and they were big fingers. It required two of us to carry the banana up the hill and even with the two of us carrying it, we had to stop along the way on numerous occasions. And even then, so heavy was the bunch of banana that we had to put it in the trunk of the car. And even after that, I was dizzy. It was too much for me to carry. The weight was too great. The burden was too heavy. It is that kind of picture that came to my mind as I read what Jesus says. Those who are heavy laden, who are carrying a burden that is more than they can bear. Many people are carrying burdens which are too great for them. They're more than they can bear. They are exhausted. Whether it is burden that they have taken up or others have placed on them, but they know it is too much for them. They cannot carry it. And Jesus says, all who are heavy laden, come, I will give you rest. What kind of burden are you carrying today? What kind of weight is, is heavily laid on your shoulder and you feel it is too much for you, but you are still carrying it? Jesus says, all who are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. It is a comprehensive, all-encompassing appeal. It does not matter what labor you are engaged in or what, what burden you are carrying. Jesus says, come and I will give you rest. That then, my friends, speaks about the guarantee, the guaranteed certainty of rest and relief. I will give you rest. To all who come, Jesus offers the guarantee of relief and rest, of salvation. Jesus' utterance is personal, active, affirmative, and emphatic. I will give you rest. What we have here is absolute certainty. Jesus as the revelation, as the revealer of who God is, of, of God's character, speaks with authority. 
Jesus, who in God made the world and who Genesis tells us rested. He says, I can give you rest that you need. I know you have labored. I know you are heavy laden. I know you are weary and tired. I will give you rest. Jesus, as a co-creator with God, who was there from the beginning, will give you rest. He makes it possible. All of these truths are wrapped up in Jesus, who himself is the personification of truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life, he says. So we know he cannot lie. He says, I will give you rest. On our part, it is individualized. It is personalized. I will give you rest. One famous modern-day personality talks about you and you and you. I have one for you and you and you. Jesus is saying the same thing. In fact, he said it before. I will give you rest. You can put your name there. Jesus says, I will give rest. It's personalized and it's individualized. What is this rest and relief that Jesus is offering? It is to know that when we come to Jesus, when we put our trust in him, he will provide a solution. He will give us a way out. He will take the burden that we're carrying and give us something that we can manage or he will give us the resources that we need to carry the load. In the first instance, he will take our burden and give us his yoke. Again, using agrarian language of the ox that was attached to the, the pole and it was yoked in order to plow the field. Jesus says, I will give you my yoke. Take my yoke. I will take your heavy burden and you can take my light yoke. It speaks to the fact then that it's not fair. It's not a fair exchange. He takes what is heavy. And he gives us something light. And that speaks to the grace. That it's an offer that is rooted in God's kindness. Not our worthiness. But instead our neediness. Our need of it. When we trust Jesus, we discover how foolish we had been in trying to do it on our own. What Jesus offers us is an unfair exchange. He asks us to give him our heavy burden and to take his light load. It's all of grace. In the second case, Jesus may not remove the burden, but he will provide added, resor added resources to enable us to go through. He may bring a friend, a prayer partner, members from the community of faith, who will come alongside us, who will be in solidarity with us, who will support us so it can make the load lighter, can make the burden easier to carry. Its weight has not been removed, but we have help now. So he doesn't always promise that he's going to take the burden away, but he will give added resources, added strength. And we come to the end of ourselves, when we come to the to, 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 to end of our resources, our Father all-knowing has only just begun. When we come to him, he gives us rest and relief. I will give you rest. So there is the, the comprehensive nature of the offer. There's a guaranteed certainty of the result, but there is the necessity for action, for a response. Come, take, learn, find. The invitation is comprehensive. All, all who have labored and are heavy laden, the relief is guaranteed. I will give you rest. But now action is required. A response is needed. Four action words. Come, 
take, learn, find. Come. This calls for movement. Movement in thinking, in attitude, in posture. It is to accept that our present situation is untenable and unsustainable. To continue to work without resting will result in certain demise. I don't know if you've heard of the woodcutter who was chopping down trees, chopping down, chopping down, chopping down nonstop. A wise man came to him and says, why don't you stop and rest and sharpen your axe? He says, I'm too busy chopping trees to sharpen my axe or to rest. You understand the folly of that because at some point he's going to have to stop. The axe is going to wear out and he's going to become tired. So to Christ, a change. Come and rest. Move from where you are and move towards Jesus. Heed the call. Transfer your trust from yourself and place it in him. Come, Jesus says. You cannot carry the load by yourself. You only have a certain amount of energy. You have limited resources. The supply needs to be replenished. You need to rest. Jesus says, come. And he says, take, take my yoke upon you. When you come to Jesus, he has something there waiting for you. So the next step is to take. It is to receive what he's offering and to accept the rest he has provided. To take for the labored is to stop working, to stop striving, to stop trying and to start trusting. For the heavy laden, it means to put down the heavy burden and to embrace the way of Jesus. It is to receive a gift, to receive the gift of a new life, a life in all its fullness made available in Jesus Christ. It is to accept, it is to acknowledge that you don't deserve it, but you need it. It is to embrace this overwhelming, never-ending love that God lavishes upon us in Jesus Christ. In a sense, God is reckless with his love. He freely disposes it without thought. In a sense. In a sense. There's no limit to it. As 1 John 3 says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. To take the yoke then is to receive as a gracious gift that which the Father has for us. And then Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light and you will find rest for your soul. Learn and discover. Learn and find out. Once we take the yoke, we also begin to learn the way of discipleship and discover the life that God has called us to. No longer will we be seeking after the fleeting and futile things of this world that easily fade away. No longer will we waste energy and effort in useless, empty pursuits, chasing after the wind. Instead, we will find that Jesus is all that we want, for in him we discover all that we truly need. All the things we once held dear, all the things we spent our life pursuing, thinking that they would satisfy, they only left us tired and weary and drained and burdened. But when we learn the way of Jesus, we learn what really fulfills and satisfies. We find rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. and You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is offering rest. Rest is available freely in Jesus Christ, but action is necessary. We must come. 
We must move from where we are, move towards Jesus. We must take, take what he offers, and then we must learn his way and discover the new life he has for us. Friends, 2020 has been exhausting so far. It has been taxing, and I've only gone six months. You may feel tired, weary, and worn out. You may feel like you can't go on any longer. Jesus speaks to us, and he says, rest is available. He says, just take his hand. Take his hand. Or even better, allow him to take your hand. For the tired and the burdened, for the weary and the heavy laden, it's time to rest. It's time to cease from your striving and to put down your burden. Hear the gracious invitation of our Lord. Accept the generous offer given so fully and freely in Jesus Christ. What must you do? Come. Come to me, Jesus says. Put your trust in him and place your life in his hand. Take the life he offers. Take the path that, of discipleship that he's inviting you to. Let go of the things you are you're, you're, you're pursuing and yearning after and longing for. Lay down the burdens you have been carrying that are too great for you. Place your trust in Jesus Christ. Come and you will learn his way and find what life is truly, what life truly is worth living. It's time to rest in Jesus. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. May that be the prayer of our hearts today. May we give our lives into the hand of the one who still the waters. May we give our lives into the hand of the one who calmed the sea. As we take a look at ourselves, may we see differently. Come, Jesus says, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. Precious.
is a good God who wants and loves to do good for us, we have the confidence that we can go to him and place our requests before him. Let us now offer our prayers of intercession as we place our needs before Almighty God. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you that we can come to you with the needs of our hearts and be assured that you will hear us and answer us. Lord, we have many needs, many things that weigh us down, many things that cause us concern. We're thankful that you are eager to hear them and quick to respond to us. So Lord, we lift up before you our personal and family concerns. We think of those who are sick, those who are housebound, the aged, the infirmed. Think of our children, those who are still in school, those who are on break, those who will go to a new school in September. We place all these in your hands, O Lord. We ask that for our children, we provide appropriate summer activities for them that will enable them to have fun. Lord, we pray that your healing hand will rest upon those who are sick and comfort those who are grieving and those who are housebound. Lord, we look in our community, many affected by the economic strains of COVID-19. Some have lost their jobs. We pray for them. Think of the poor and the homeless and the needy. We give them to you, O God. We look around us, Lord. We see the national concerns, crime and violence, corruption. Father God, we pray for the security forces, that you'd keep them safe and watch over them and help them as they carry their duties to do so with a sense of fairness, compassion, and justice. Watch over them and keep them safe, O God. We think of those who have been killed in the line of duty. Remember their families at this time and their colleagues. Comfort them. Almighty God, we lift up our government and civic leaders to you, our prime minister, members of the cabinet, members of parliament, our mayors, our custodies, our parish councillors. Father God, we give them into your hand as they attend to the affairs of our society. May they do so with righteousness as their bulwark. Lord, all over the world there are difficulties. Many are dying, many are sick on account of the coronavirus. Lord God, we pray for them. Pray for our doctors and nurses and those who administer care. Pray for world leaders. May they function with wisdom and with a sense of justice as they work for the common good. Lord, we pray for your church in the world. May your church be healthy and strong. May our life be marked by love and compassion. Lord, may we not lose sight of our mission to be salt and light in the world. Lord, strengthen your church. May she be united in mission and purpose. Father God, there are many other concerns we have. You know them. Tend to the cry of our hearts now, O Lord. May our prayers come up to you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
to the end of this time of worship. I send you forth with this blessing. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit our Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a good week, my friends. May the peace of Christ dwell with you always.